All right, today we're going to take a look at ESC PDM frequency. We're first going to review what it is, then we're going to look at from 24 to 48 to 96 kilohertz. We're going to look at the thrust differences between them, the torque differences between them, and the impacts of dead time. Now the first thing we want to talk about is just some basics on the motor. Of course we have the rotor on the outside or the bell with the magnets and on the inside we have the stator with the windings and as the magnet goes past one of the windings the ESC detects that with the back EMF, charges the winding and pushes the magnet onto the next one and it just does that at an incredibly fast rate. Now with electricity it's either on or it's off. So there's no halfway in between. So imagine this is one cycle where it's going to power up to push the magnet. So at 100% throttle, what it's gonna do is fully charge from zero to 500, and it's gonna power that coil the entire time, induce a field, and as in physics 101, you know, it has a coil around a metal that induces a magnetic field, which goes ahead and pushes the magnet. So what do you wanna do if you don't want it to push all, you know, 100% you want because that would be 100% throttle because uh, all of them would be doing that all at the same time they're all either 100% or something less so what you can do is you can pulse the power on and off during its push cycle so in this example what we're going to do is we're going to slowly start to decrease the throttle here and you can see as we're going to 80 90 70 percent let's just bring this down to 50 percent what we're going to do is 24,000 times per second we're going to pulse the power on and then off and then on and then off and this cycle between pulse on and pulse off is exactly going to match the time length for 50 percent throttle and that's how we're going to reduce the amount of push so instead of just charging it the entire time we're going to just push in and turn the power on and off really fast, 24,000 times per second. And that's the PWM frequency. So the duty cycle is how long it, the magnet is powered or charged versus how much it's not. So if I lower the duty cycle to 20% throttle, you can see it's just pushing for a little bit, but then it's off for a while, then it pushes again for a little bit, and then it's off for a while, and then it pushes again, and then it's off for a while. And then obviously this is all in the part where just one coil is pushing one magnet. Now they're all doing this all at the same time, so it's complexity through the amount of magnets that are in the motor and all the little things, but if you just really break it down to its basic elements, you have one magnet, one coil, it's in a spot where the, the coil, the magnet is past the center of the coil and it's gonna start to push it. It's gonna push a little, only 20% of the time. So it's gonna push, 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 but it, those pushes are not gonna be full voltage. If we were at 100% throttle, it would just peg the voltage at 100% and then sling the magnet out. With a 20% duty cycle, again, it's just gonna give little pushes. The speed of which those pushes are occurring, those, you know, you can see here that's 20%, then off, then 20%. So this is 24 kilohertz and you can see down below this is 48 kilohertz so as you increase the pwm frequency your on off site you're just really increasing the frequency of your little on off cycles but ultimately there's still 20 percent of the total duty cycle time here so as i increase this to 50 percent you can see the on time up here it is 50% and the off time is 50%. Same thing down here, your on time here is 50% and your off time here is 50%. These black bars are trying to represent the dead time that you get and that's hard coded into each ESC. But it can vary per ESC and some ESC firmwares allow you to change the dead time which is kind of risky-ish but I believe it is an option in some firmwares. So recently, Ronald Harold at Mini Quad Test Bench did some tests on the same motor, same props, with different PWM frequencies and also with different ESC firmwares. So if you go to Mini Quad Test Bench, and you can go do this right now, and go to Data Explorer, and then we're gonna browse all the way down to the bottom. And then if you hit this drop down here and go and select Step Response, there's only one entry for this so far, but go ahead and select Step Response. 
Then in the figures here, you can select the different things. So you see you have JESC, 24 kilohertz, JESC, 48 kilohertz. There's Alka, which is an open source firmware. There's BLHeli32, which is closed source firmware. And you can see we have then the different PDBM frequencies here and then different dead times. So he, these are different ESCs between the 60, the 40, the 20, the 12. Those would be different ESCs with different dead times, I presume. I, I don't think he was changing the dead times on the same ESC, but I'm not 100% positive about that. You can see we have some auto. So when you're comparing these, you'd want to have these same dead times. You'd want to, unless you wanted to see the difference between a, a dead time of 60 and a dead time of 40 and 12 and so on and so forth. Now to quickly cover that, the dead time is the interval that an ESC will just shut off the power to the coil altogether, just to make sure that there is no overlap when it's trying to push current so the coil can kind of discharge there. And if the dead time is too short, your ESCs and your motors will get really hot. If the dead time is too long, obviously it chews away at this, this braking torque here, uh, especially at the higher PDBM frequencies. Uh, so it's, it's chewing away at the off time because it, you, know, you have this inserted dead time at the beginning of each PWM power up on the coil. So let's look at the good stuff. And there's some pretty surprising results. So, there's, you know, there's all this talk about, you know, what's the best PWM frequency? And for a while it was, hey, go up to 48 kilohertz, go up to 48 kilohertz, it's smoother, so on and so forth. But there is some downsides. So I don't know that there's necessarily one thing fits all, but it's definitely not crazy to run 24 kilohertz. It's not crazy to run 96 kilohertz either. So before we go into the benefit of the higher PWM frequencies, let's talk quickly about the downsides. One of the downsides is that a higher PWM frequency will have less braking torque on the motor. And you can kind of see this here, where you have the 24 or the 16 kilohertz, sorry, 24, 32, and 48 kilohertz, same, same dead time, 60. And you can see how the higher PWM frequencies are not ramping down as quick. You, know, you can see there's a slower ramp off here. So that's one downside. Another downside is a higher PWM frequency will generally have a little bit less low end torque on the motor. And it's not illustrated perfectly here, although you can see it a little bit, um, but you can just test it for yourself. Set your ESCs to 24 kilohertz and just go ahead and with the props off, spin them up just by arming the quad and then just grab them a little bit and then do the same thing at a higher PWM frequency. If you can go up to 96 kilohertz, obviously you'd see the most difference. And then you can spin them. You can see it will be a little bit easier to stop the motor with a higher PWM frequency because those, when it's charging the magnet, it's not staying on as long. It's, it's kind of charging it off you know, it's charging on and off. And it's almost like anti-lock brakes in reverse where it's just making these little juts to push the Mac, the motor along versus just charging it off, charging it off, charging it off, things of that nature. Now, obviously everything is happening really, really fast. So my little analogy there is a little off since it's happening 24,000 times per second at 24 kilohertz versus 96,000 times per second. So everything's moving extremely fast, uh, but hopefully that illustration helps give a little bit of understanding of kind of what's going on there. So now to the good stuff. So as you can see here, the biggest finding that Ryan discovered with these tests is that the higher PWM frequency is producing more thrust. So, and it's a little interesting here because the 32 kilohertz actually went down, but when you look at the 24 kilohertz versus the 48 kilohertz, so it's actually, you can see that the 48 out of all of them is producing the most thrust. And you can also compare then the thrust amount or the characteristics of your, your braking and things of that nature between the different ESC firmwares. We have BL Heli 32, 48 kilohertz, dead time 60, JESC 48 kilohertz, Alka 48 kilohertz, BL Heli 32, 48 kilohertz again, but dead time of 12. And you can kind of look at and see the differences here. You can see how at the very top end, at the very low end, they're about the same, but in between, you know, there's definitely a thrust differential uh, between that in this test. Now, this is a sample size of one, but nevertheless, uh, it's interesting data to kind of get the ball rolling and starting to think about these things.
And you can also see the impacts of different dead times. So with this, this is all BL Heli 32, 48 kilohertz, and then we have a dead time of 60, 20, and 12. And you can see the impacts on the ramp down time. That's basically the braking force uh, that the motor is able to implement. Of course, the wider this dead band time is here, then that would chew up more of its off time down here. So then it's going to have an impact on its braking torque to, to spin the motor down. So check it out. Do keep in mind that if you want to see all the data, you know, all the different ramps of it, just put in zero down here and then you can just crank up a big number over here and then you can show all the different ramps. You can use this indicator then. You mostly you have to, you know, this is like 14.8 whatever million. So you'd have to put that down in here if you wanted to get it to a certain section, that would be your start point. And then maybe if you wanted to look at an end point, this would be 16.3 million. So you put that down here and then hit go and then it would kind of zoom in on that specific section. Well, that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully this was helpful, shed some new information out into the community. Big thanks to Ryan for running these tests and I'm sure he's gonna be doing more tests like this. I think it's a really powerful way to bring something new into the hobby and the community. I was not aware that the higher PWM frequencies can produce more thrust on a motor. You know, we, we know about the low-end torque issues of them. We know that higher PWM frequencies provide kind of a smoother motor response. So as the it's charging and discharging the stator, it's happening more frequently, which makes the motor kind of run a little bit more smooth and not so jaggedy. So we knew about those things, but not so much about the thrust differential uh, between the higher ones. So that's another win for higher PWM frequencies. I know a lot of people are using 48 kilohertz and it seems like to compensate for the low end torque issues using thrust linearization to kind of boost the PIDs at the low end to deal with the low, less amount of torque that the motor will have. So then it's, you know, maybe a win-win. Smoother motors, uh, you have more, it looks like you have more thrust based on these test results. And then the thrust linearization is helping with the low end torque issues. But hey, what are you using? What have you found to work best for you? Drop it in the comments below and we'll all learn from each other. Thanks everybody, and I hope this helped.